Hello everybody, welcome into the Fallout Shelter. I've got some links for some government weather modification and geoengineering things I want to share with you. I went over quite a few of them on the DLive live streams and I don't really remember what all has been put on the YouTube channels before. You get the question a lot of times, how do I wake people up? Well, for the ones that are going to be able to be woken up, the only way I have done so has been face to face and it has been by printing out the documents that I'm fixing to share with you and having a printed version so that when I'm talking to people about the government uh, doing the geoengineering and the weather modification, I just hand these to them and go, okay, these are your highly conspiratorial government documents based on weather modification and geoengineering. I will try my best to keep this short. I think I have 10 or 11 to go through. Uh, I will leave links below in the description. I will leave links below in the description for DLive for the live streams. And we'll be able to start live streaming here again, I think, on January the 22nd. Uh, we will start with a U.S. Government Accountability Office document that was put out on August 11th, 1976. This is from the Government Accountability Office.gov. Uh, the North American Weather Consultants protested the award of a weather modification contract on August 11, 1976. You can go through and print all this and get all the details about that. That is an actual uh, claim that was made with the Office of Interior, the Department of Interior, with the government over uh, what the North American Weather Consultants considered a faulty award of a weather modification contract from the government. Uh, I got this article from Richie's last video. It was freaking awesome. Uh, rain making used as a weapon by the U.S. in 1972. I flipped that up here because this is from history.state.gov from the Office of the Historian. Uh, number 274, memorandum from the Deputy Undersecretary of State for Political Affairs Kohler to the Secretary of State Rusk. This document here is about Operation Popeye, Project Popeye where cloud seeding and weather modification was done over uh, Vietnam and Laos. And in this document, it says that it was so, so successful that we should probably just stop doing it. Uh, I suggest you go and read all of this information and print it and hand it to people. This is the House hearing from the Committee on Science and Technology in the House of Representatives, the 111th Congress, that was held uh, in 2009. Serial numbers 111-62, 111-75, 111-88. I'm sure those numbers are absolutely no coincidence because printed for use of the Committee on Science and Technology, and there is the chaos emblem right up under it. As you scroll on down through here, you will find all of the typical names that you normally would expect to find. Uh, and one, which is really interesting, you will find a witness list you'll find Dr. Ken Caldiera, and if you keep looking on it, you'll also find uh, Dr. David Keith. All of the, uh, there's Dr. David Keith right there, Canada Research Chair in Energy and Environment. He's supposed to be working for Harvard to block the sun. He's working in Canada to convert CO2 into a fuel using your tax money in America, and Bill Gates is behind most of it with his uh, funding. In this here, you can find about solar radiation management, you can find out about stratospheric aerosol injections, and you can find out about space mirrors, all being discussed by, yeah, the very conspiratorial House of Representatives. Uh, I suggest you print that one out and carrying it along. This is from the Meteorological Journals in 1976, Weather Modification by Carbon Dust Absorption of Solar Energy and also the use of vertically pointed pulse Doppler radar in cloud physics and weather modification studies, also from 1976. Uh, many, many, many years old, many, many years old technology, still being used today, still being told that it's not being used. Uh, and in this one here, you can actually see, I think if you scroll down far enough, there is, this is from Applied Science Journals, not somebody drawing. They show how you could actually store carbon dust, mix it into the jet fuels, and spray it out of the back of the airplane in 1976. I print all of this stuff out, and I keep a copy of it with me to hand out to people when they go, oh, that's just nuts. 
Uh, let's keep going. This is the U.S. Code of Federal Regulations for Weather Modification. Uh, you come right down here to the definitions as used in this part. Term shall have the meaning described in this section. Administrator is the administrator of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Association. Any individual, corporation, company, association, firm, partnership, society, joint stock company, any state or local government or any federal or any agency thereof or any other organization, whether commercial or nonprofit, except we're acting solely as an employee, uh, that is what's considered a person in these definitions. Weather modification activity, any activity performed with the intent of producing artificial changes in the composition, behavior, or dynamics of the atmosphere. That is the definition of weather modification activity in the government regulations 908.1. You can go through the rest of them. They're about the reporting and the way it can and can't be done. It also in here talks about the, some of the objects used in weather modification, silver iodide, urea, sulfur di uh, all kind of stuff. You need to check it out. But this is where you report all of your weather modification is to NOAA. This link will also be in the description. Uh, and there's 69 pages of things here that you can look into. And this is what the stuff you'll get up. This is like... Uh, this is what they actually have to turn into the federal government when they do weather modification activities. Let's see, uh, number of modification days, 13. Increased precipitation, 13. Silver iodide, whatever that amount is, that is the amount of silver iodide that was blasted up into the clouds to create the rain. Let I remind you, silver iodide is not water. You should probably not be consuming it, and it should probably not be in your water supply. This was also in Richie's last video. I'd seen it before, but I'd lost the link. It is the HR 2977 from the 107th Congress, 2001 to 2002. Uh, you go on down here and it talks about space weapons. Uh, the term space means all space extending upward from an altitude greater than 60 kilometers above the surface of the Earth and any celestial body in outer space. Just for the record, Merriam-Webster defines celestial of relating to or suggesting heaven or divinity of or relating to the sky or visible heavens. When you come on down to the end of this, it says such terms include exotic weapon systems such as electronic, psychotronic, or information weapons, chemtrails, high altitude, ultra low frequency weapon systems, I have some videos on these next ones. Uh, plasma, electromagnetic, sonic, or ultrasonic weapons. I have some stuff on the ultrasonic weapons. As far as ultra high frequency, super high frequency, that's considered from the 3 gigahertz to 300 gigahertz range, which the stuff on the towers now is capable of carrying 300 gigahertz. They don't tell you that, but I found product data sheets on them where it does absolutely say that. And you can go on and on and on. Now, I know I didn't go into these documents. Uh, I do that on live streams. I usually read every word of them or at least 60 or 70 percent of them and go through them. But like I said, I will leave the links to every document that I just showed in the description so that you can go take, look at them yourself. I suggest printing them because I have had some documents that I stuck up in a video. Uh, they were requests for proposals for weather modification. And after having them up for just a short amount of time, those links disappeared and I can't find them no more because they don't have to keep them up. Um, I will have a link below to get into DLive. If you're new to DLive, uh, there will be a, a sign-up link. And everything else will be down there. Y'all know what to do. Uh, I appreciate all the support. I appreciate all the people that have helped me to this point. And I hope to continue to keep bringing you uh, more information on weather modification and geoengineering. And, and like live streams, I will do this real quick. Father in heaven, I pray to you and thank you for everything that you give to us. I ask you to give us the strength and energy and the knowledge and wisdom to continue the fight to take care of this garden in which you so graciously created for us. Keep us separated from those that will be destroyed for destroying the earth. And I thank you for that and come to you through your son. Everybody have a wonderful day, a wonderful night. Check out our DLive and everything else. Once again... We love you from the Fallout Shelter. Everybody have a great day, and God bless you.